lot of trouble trying to figure out this TED Talk. I knew what I wanted to talk about and the story I would tell, but when it came down to actually writing it, I couldn't figure out what to say. Major writer's block. Something you don't want to have when you have a deadline for a TED Talk. And so, in an attempt to clear my mind from the blankness, I laid in my bed, wondering, why can't I figure this out? I know the story I want to convey and the message, but I can't seem to translate my mere thoughts into words. Here was my idea. When anyone asked me anything about my favorite subjects, music styles, anything, classes, it all came down to one faulty answer. I don't know. I'm too indecisive. My fear of fitting into the ideals of society shut me and my imagination down from the very beginning of my life. The one question I always had an answer to, however, was that question adults love to ask. What do you want to do when you grow up? Immediate answer, a doctor. And the best part about it is that it seemed to be something people liked to hear. They'd applaud me as if I'd made the most intelligent decision of the universe. When I was younger, I loved anatomy. I loved studying the different systems of the body. My favorite was the cardiovascular system. I would recite the circulation of the blood over and over to the point in which my sisters had to beg me to stop. I don't know why I found interest in this, but it fascinated me the way in which the different systems of the body work together to create something so wonderful, a human being, a person. And so, at a very young age, I decided this is what I want to do in my life. This is my calling, and no one could convince me otherwise. At age four, I decided I had my whole life planned out. I would be an amazing student, get into Stanford, graduate, get an amazing job, become the best doctor around, and of course, become super rich. <laughs> but my four-year-old brain left out a few uncalculated factors. About 10 years later, I realized this is not what I want to do in my life. I don't know why I lost interest in medicine or how, all I know is that I did. And so, I started to do what most do. Question my life. The meaning behind it, of what would come next, the purpose. And then I started wondering why I wanted to do medicine in the first place. I mean, I loved anatomy, but I loved so many other things, so why medicine? My mother tells me that it's because I wanted to help people. I wanted to take care of her and my father when they grew older, like a thank you. But there must be other ways of doing so. So I questioned, is this all just a trick of our society? The way in which we put ourselves in social hierarchies from a young age, having things such as our careers put into this different, things that we feel we have to achieve. And so, as I lost myself in all these questions, I decided it doesn't matter, at least not now. If push comes to shove, I can just go into college undeclared and explore my options. So, I decided to focus on myself, my well-being, and focus on my hobbies. In doing so, I was presented with the opportunity to audition for the Western Stages production of Tech Everlasting. After a couple weeks of auditions and callbacks, which felt like an eternity, I booked the lead as Winnie Foster. Surprised, but delightedly, I accepted the role, putting everything in to demonstrate that I belonged. I had countless hours of rehearsal. Tuesday through Friday, 6 to 10. Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 4. And after a very late lunch break, 6 to 10. 
Soon enough, my life became split between school and theater. But, of course, school is always the priority, always is and always will be. But theater started becoming a little more of my priority. I loved it, being at the Western stage. There was something about the way in which I could use my voice as a form of expression. I could be good or bad, and it didn't matter because whatever I did, it wasn't me. It was my character. When I wasn't in rehearsal, I thought about the rehearsal schedule, what I would practice. And when I was on stage, I thought about it. The lights shining down on us, letting go of every possible emotion. And so it was no longer, I don't want to be a doctor. Rather, I want to go into performing arts. And as simple as that might sound, it was not simple at all. You see, when you tell people you want to be a doctor, especially at such a young age, you get responses such as, that is wonderful. You know, they're paid well, they're respected, they're educated. You'd make a wonderful doctor. On the other hand, when you tell people you want to go into performing arts, you get answers more like, oh, that's nice. Uh, you can always change your mind. <laughs> or, interesting. What about being a doctor? <laughs> or, my personal favorite, um, that's cool, but you might want to get a backup. <laughs> Their attempt at being supportive is there, but sometimes I just wish they'd say nothing at all. And so, when people asked me what I wanted to do in life, this question joined most. I don't know. I'm too indecisive. Or I'd go back into my default of becoming a doctor. And this is why I would hide. I wanted to go into performing arts, and I knew it was what made me happy, but sometimes my happiness didn't seem to be enough. At least not for society. Luckily, my parents are very supportive, and not the fake kind. <laughs> they truly just want me to be happy, and that allowed me to see that that's what really matters. As I've continued working with the Western stage, most recently in their two by four, working with prop design, and acting, along with many other things, I've met a lot of wonderful people who have shown me the true value of the arts. Working with a lot of young adults who are a few steps ahead of me in their career has allowed me to see that what they do is important and special, and not because someone told me to, rather because I could see it in everything I learned from them. From tech, to prop design, set design, costuming, even stage and theater etiquette. Being responsible, respectful, timely, honest and kind. But most importantly, because they've shown me that it's important to just be yourself, regardless of what other people think. And there I was, laying in my room with a wonderful idea for a talk, not being able to get my words down on paper. And then it hit me. <laughs> I'm afraid of what people think. In an attempt to write about defying society and not caring about people's opinion, I was faced with that same exact difficulty, just in a different way worried about what you all would think about what I said and did on this stage. So, I'm not here to tell you to not be afraid or that you shouldn't worry about people's opinions, because you will. Even if you try not to, you most likely will. And when you think that you don't, ask yourself, am I being myself or am I being what I think other people want me to be? I do, however, have this request. If there's something you want to do, something you think will bring something positive and powerful out of you, do it. 
Don't let other people's opinion be the reason that you don't. And if you're afraid of the outcome, that's when you know that it's important. I'll start. Can I please have a volunteer? <laughs> um, yes, Ben? You can stay in your seat. I, sorry, I should have been more specific. Would you please ask me what I want to do in life? Uh, so, uh, what do you want to do in your uh, life? <laughs> you see, it's funny you ask. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, I want to go into performing arts, double major with English, because, of course, I need a backup. <laughs> And, you know, there's also art in that, poetry, literature, creative writing. And I truly just feel like it brings out something great in me. It allows me to channel myself in the most positive way. I want to show children and even adults that there's so many things you can do in life just to be happy. Or try something new, experience, maybe even just... <sighs> Take a breath and escape for a few minutes. Channel your emotions. Would you please ask me why? Why? <laughs> you see, it's interesting you ask. When I was younger, I loved anatomy. I could never figure out why. Why anatomy and then performing arts. But I think I figured it out. Think of it this way. Society. Building blocks that create our reality. The reality that is reality because we decide that it is. Systems and hierarchies that create what we believe is valuable for us to see something positive within ourselves. Anatomy. Systems of the body that work together to create something wonderful. A human being a person. This is where we get to take control, and define our own reality, our own building blocks through our thoughts and emotions. Theater, it has just as many moving parts that come together to create something magical, almost like a life form of its own. The lights are the eyes. The orchestra is the vocal cords. The singing and dancing are the soul. The costume is the skin. Now I ask you, what do you want to do in life? What is one thing you want to experience, achieve, accomplish, try? It can be anything, big or small. It doesn't have to be life-changing. It can be if you want it to. I just have one request. Whatever you choose, own it. <laughs> <laughs>